Francesco Lentini. Born a single child in 1884, Lentini had a twin. The twin embryos did not fully separate in the womb, causing Lentini to be born with some body parts of his sibling. He had a full pelvis bone, male genitalia, and a fully formed leg. In a way, Lentini could have been a four-legged man because there was a foot attached to the knee of his third leg. However, it was not fully formed, so is not regarded as one. His legs were not of the same length, and he often positioned them on stools to sit properly. Sixteen toes sounds like a lot to wiggle, but Lentini had that many. The foot attached to the third leg had one toe. He probably could not wiggle that one. Now, you might be wondering why Lentini never got the extra appendages removed. He was taken to an institution for disabled children on the island of Malta when he was about seven or nine years of age. The doctors examined him and decided not to remove his third leg. This was because his extra appendage was so close to his spine that removing it would mean that Lentini would end up paralyzed. They chose the seemingly lesser of both evils and let him continuing leaving with his extra leg. Although Lentini's parents seemed to be supportive of him in his later years, they were not very accepting of the child's condition. He was sent to live with his aunt. He lived in shame until he began schooling at an institution for disabled children in Italy. He stopped being embarrassed by his condition when he saw the children defy their situations and live their life without complaint. It was then he realized that he could live a somewhat normal life. If the disabled children could have a happy life, then maybe he could have one too. At six years of age, Lentini met the man that would change his life, Vincenzo Magnano. A puppeteer met Lentini in the town of Rosalini in Sicily, where he had lived all his life. By this time, Lentini was living with his parents again, and Vincenzo asked their permission for their son to be brought to the United States. They agreed, but insisted that he would start performing at the Barnum & Bailey only if his entire family came along to the United States with him. He also had to finish schooling. This helped Lentini speak up to four languages by the time he was done. He arrived in the United States when he was eight. It was then Lentini began to pick interest in physical activity. His third leg was shorter than the other two. This made it impossible for him to walk with it. But Lentini began running, jumping, and riding bicycles. He learned how to ride a horse, ice skate, and even roller skate. Lentini let nothing get in his way and used the third leg as a rudder while swimming. If you were wondering if he ever drove a car, well, he did. Lentini was also an author. Because of how intriguing his condition was, many people wanted to know about his life. He gave out this information for free in his pamphlets. It was in one of these he explained how he used having a third leg to his advantage when he went swimming. In his words, One advantage I have over the other fellow when I swim is that I use the extra limb as a rudder. He also wrote about sex. Yup, a lot of people wanted to know what a man with an extra set of genitals had to say about lovemaking. His six-page booklet sold for 25 cents, and it was called The Life History of Francesco A. Lentini, Three-Legged Wonder. In it was a full description of his condition, and of course, he made sure to include information about sex and procreation. Some of the titles of the pamphlet's chapters were Illicit Intercourse and Physiology of Sex Life. There was even a section where he discussed good hygiene habits. Lentini started performing on the famous Ringling Brothers Circus, the Barnum and Bailey Circus, and even Buffalo Bill's Wild West Show. He was popularly known as the greatest Lentini, delighting the audience with his wit and charm. With time, Lentini was so good that he was given his sideshow, where he fascinated the audience with his ability to kick a ball with his famous third leg. The audience could also ask personal questions about his extracurricular activities and sex life. Having three legs did not stop from charming and marrying a woman named Teresa Murray and having four children with her. All his children were normal. He traveled the world, performing on the stages of the many sideshows. Lentini settled down in Gibtown, which is known for being the place many circus acts retired to. This was because they were treated badly in other places, and they found a home in Gibtown, where everyone accepted each other, no matter how strange they were. Lentini died in 1966 on September 22nd of lung failure. Even though the practice of showcasing people with strange conditions is frowned at now, the circus helped Lentini achieve true success. I hope you learned something new today. If you still have some questions left, let us know in the comment section below. If you want to know what would happen if dinosaurs were still alive, click on the video given on your screen. Don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.